Good morning guys. Um, I just wanted to come at you guys today with a video that I've, I've been wanting to do for a long time actually. Um, but first of all I wanted to tell everybody Happy New Year and I hope that you guys had a fabulous time. I personally fell asleep. Um, but I ended up waking up because I had to go pick up my daughter from a friend's house. So anyway. Um, with that being said, um, I just wanted to kind of give a small little update about my situation. I was going to have an uh, appointment on jo uh, January 5th to go to True Results um, for a consultation and just everything. Well, anyway, they got my insurance information and found out that my insurance will not cover um, the vertical sleep. Well, it won't cover any, gas any surgery, weight loss surgery. Definitely not the gastric sleeve, um, and so and they don't even have financing available for the gastric sleeve. And so the only option that I have with them would be uh, for the lap band, which is um, absolutely not going to work for me. And so I spoke with the young lady there and, and asked her to just remove me from the appointment list on the 5th, um, that the lap band is not going to work for me. So my other uh, option right now is to go ahead and call my mom's surgeon, Dr. John Pilcher. She, he did her surgery for her about five years ago. She did, got the gastric bypass. And if nothing else, just to get a consultation with them to see where um, I would be as far as self-pay and how much it would cost. My husband wants me to get a cost for that um, before we move forward because really and truly honestly my my first choice is to go to Dr. Guillermo, Guillermo uh, Alvarez in Piedras Negras, Mexico. It's just over the border from Eagle Pass here in Texas. Um, anyway and so that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, uh, I will be trying to call hopefully on Monday to get an appointment. So I will be in touch and just kind of see what's going on with that. Anyway, the point of today's video, now that I'm two minutes in, um, is to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart. I am a um, registered dental hygienist, and uh, basically I see uh, patients every day that have some kind of gum problem or teeth problems or whatever the case may be. And I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about it, just in case you don't know or if you did know, maybe you don't have a lot of information on it. Um, you know, just to kind of t put it out there. People just don't know. You don't know what you don't know until you learn, right? And so um, with that being said, before I even go any further with this, I want to let you know that I don't want you, um, I, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I just want to say that I'm not a doctor and that my advice is not to be uh, replaced by your dentist or your, or your physician. So of course they at the end of the day have you know, what's going to be in your best interest because they have your medical history and everything uh, in front of them. However, I'm just telling you like the general norms and things that I see and things that I know. Uh, with that being said, I do have a Bachelor of Science in Dental Hygiene and so therefore by that I am, I am allowed to give you my professional opinion on the subject matter. And basically what we're going to be talking about today is um, the triangle, the love triangle I like to call it, of periodontal disease, obesity, and diabetes. Um, and this is, of course, for some people. It's not for everybody. And, you know, my mother is one of those. She has really, really bad diabetes. She's had uh, obesity. She had, like I said, had gastric bypass, but she does not have periodontal disease. She has perfect teeth, perfect gums, uh, you know. So it, it's not um, for everybody. And then there's some patients I come, I see in that come in, they, they don't have diabetes yet necessarily, but they have severe periodontal disease. So with that being said, sometimes it's, um, um, the factors are, can be, um, um, what is it, um, due to family, like there, there's a family history of it, or there's just like a whole bunch of stuff. But uh, anyway, we'll get into that later. Um, basically, I wanted to talk about, if I'm looking away from the screen, the camera, I'm sorry, I'm, I have my notes on the screen because I will get lost and then I'll be rambling and you don't want that because you don't have time for all that. Um, what I wanted to talk about is uh, periodontal disease, obesity, and diabetes, which comes first, the chicken or the egg. Uh, when talking about it, it's not easy to answer this question because a lot of factors come together to create the whole picture. So people who are obese basically can get diabetes. People who have diabetes can get periodontal disease, and people who have periodontal disease are susceptible to obesity and diabetes, so basically it's a vicious cycle. So periodontal disease um, 
Uh, I want to say um, it, it has everything to do with like your gums, um, the health of your gums. Um, if you have bone loss, if you have um, just uh, um, bleeding gums. And so anyway, we're going to get into some of that later on. I want to start off by saying um, your, your mouth is basically the gateway to the rest of your body if you think about it. Let me explain. People who uh, haven't been to the dentist in like a really long time, and I want to say a really long time for me is like a year or more, uh, have a greater chance of being diagnosed with the following inflammatory diseases. Basically, it's diabetes, heart disease, stroke, periodontal disease, bone loss. This periodontal disease is basically bone loss, recession, inflammation of the gums. For men, it's for erectile dysfunction, or ED. Um, it has been linked to pancreatic cancer, RA, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, and sleep apnea. And all of these probably sound familiar to some of you because you probably are either battling them or know somebody that has these problems. But by not going to the dentist regularly, these conditions can and will get worse. I promise you that they will. They can and get will get worse if you don't get treatment. I'm not trying to scare anybody. That's the last thing I want to do. If anything, I am one of those people, one of those hygienists that will talk you off of the edge of a cliff because, you know, I have patients come in that are just wrecked with fear and they don't know what to expect and they just um, but I have a way of absolutely calming them down and just talking to them and just letting them know, you know, it's not as bad as you think that it is. It is this, it is X, Y, and Z, but we can get from here to here and this is how we're going to do it, you know, and this is how I, and this is how I talk to my patients. Um, so basically, what do all these things mean to you? It means that if you're overweight, you, um, it means that if you're overweight, if you have diabetes, heart disease, um, obstructive sleep apnea, um, among any other obesity related diseases, you're at a greater risk for uh, having periodontal disease. Will you get it? I don't know. I'm not sure about that. Everybody's different. There are factors that go into that, um, such as, like I said earlier, like family history. Um, are you a smoker? Um, and smokers, by the way, are a higher risk. Um, or do you have crowding? Do you have like misaligned teeth and crowding? Because sometimes if you have crowding, sometimes you see um, the gums are a little bit more puffy and red and bleeding and things like that. And it's hard to keep those areas clean with regular brushing and flossing because the teeth are kind of overlapped like this. And so it's hard instead of like this, they're kind of overlapped. And so it's harder. Um, do you uh, have grinding or clenching at night? Do you have problems with your TMJ? Is it hurting here in this area? Um, for those of us ladies that are blessed, and I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse, but with PCOS, um, fluctuating hormones, these things can cause some of your gums to bleed and, and, you know, be really, especially like if women who get pregnant, they, they might notice that they've never had bleeding gums. And then when they're pregnant, all of a sudden they have bleeding gums. It's like, oh my God, what happened to me? I'm doing everything. But no, sometimes it has everything to do with your hormones. Um, some of the medications that you're taking or uh, and or poor uh, diet or poor nutrition has a lot to do with it. So basically, um, I just wanted to write a, read a quote from, from the American Academy of Periodontology. Um, a diet low in important nutrients can compromise the body's immune system and make it harder for the body to fight off infection. Because periodontal disease begins as an infection, poor nutrition can worsen the condition of your gums. In addition, research has shown that obesity may increase the risk of periodontal disease. And that basically sums up everything I've been saying. Um, you know, basically, if you have a very low uh, diet, if, if your diet is low in nutrition, which most of us, it probably is, I mean, present company included, um, I have, uh, you know, I don't have periodontal disease. I don't. I take care of my teeth. I mean, I guess because I went to school and I know better, I know what to do to prevent it. It's totally a preventable disease unless, like I said, some people have what we call aggressive periodontal disease. And that is usually um, handed down so kindly from one of your parents. And you get it early, early, early in age. Like usually we don't diagnose periodontal disease until you're about 25 or older. Um, usually in um, aggressive periodontals or ju juvenile periodontal disease, it's usually uh, diagnosed when you're probably about 15 or 16 years old. 
So some, those things can't be avoided. That's just, that's genetics and, you, you know, you can't overcome that. But um, anyway, with that, um, so like I said, there's just so much things. And if anybody has any questions about any of this, please, 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 please feel free to subscribe and hit me back with a question. Or if you have something that you would love for me to, to kind of go over more in depth or in, in detail, I can absolutely do that. I don't have a problem with that. Um, I never would have a problem with that because that's my job and I love to do it. Um, so, um, anyway, what I wanted to, I'm moving on. I just wanted to talk about, um, what periodontal disease is a little bit more. Um, I want to, I always ask this to my patients, like whenever I get finished cleaning their teeth and they're, they've been bleeding and they're like, oh my God, am I bleeding? I can taste it. And I'm like, yeah, um. So basically when we get done with their cleaning, I say, basically if you were to wash your hands and, and your hands started bleeding, would you be concerned? And probably I can see a lot of you saying, yeah, be, yeah, my hands start bleeding if I, if I wash my hands. The same thing could be said about brushing and flossing. Your gums are not supposed to bleed when you floss and, and brush because if you're keeping that bacteria plaque that sticky stuff that gets on your teeth. Like when you wake up in the morning, you feel the fuzz on your teeth. That's the stuff that needs to be removed. And if you're not removing that on a regular basis, then your gums are going to bleed. It's, it's like basically kind of tearing away the scab from your skin and, it, and it'll start to bleed. And it's not, I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to gross anybody out, but I'm just trying to give you the facts. And so swollen and bleeding gums are, are early signs of gum disease, which can be, um, classified as gingivitis and you've all heard of gingivitis on the toothpaste that says fights gingivitis and fights gum disease there's things like that when you have gingivitis I want you to know when you have gingivitis that absolutely can be reversed and gingivitis is just inflammation of the gums you have bleeding you have swelling there's plaque around the gum line and you just need to remove it and get it um, get it cleaned up really well when you have progressed past gingivitis is when you start to get periodontal disease. Periodontal disease is when you have uh, loss of bone, the ligament that supports the tooth in the bone, and then your gums have started to recede and are not, and sometimes they're inflamed too, uh, but they're starting to recede back and you're starting to get a lot more sensitivity. Um, when you have that, um, that's when you cannot reverse that because once you lose bone, you have lost it. You can't get it back. And so um, that's when you go into uh, what we call periodontal maintenance. So you get a deep cleaning, you get all that bacteria cleaned out, and then you go into, per you go into maintenance. And so basically there is hope. If you have periodontal disease, you can go into what we, I like to call it stable. You're, you're stable. You're not bleeding. You're not losing any more bone. You're not uh, having in any inflammation because of your home care. You're doing, uh, you're doing really well to take care of yourself. Um, and I could get into a whole bunch of like really, really technical stuff and I'm not going to even, I don't have time for all that today. So, um, basically, um, all of this can be avoided, um, uh, even if you are overweight. Um, so I see overweight people all every day, you know, all the time and they don't have periodontal disease. Uh, I am case in point. I'm overweight and I don't have periodontal disease. So, um, you, you prevent it though, by visiting your dentist regularly and your hygienist. And then what they need to do is take, um, you need a checkup. And so you, they're going to take x-rays. They're going to, uh, get a, you're going to hopefully get a cleaning. You get an exam by the doctor. And the reason why they need to have the x-rays is so that they can see your bone level because when they get x-rays, they can see the top and the bottom of your, the, the top teeth and the bottom teeth at the same time. And in that x-ray, you can see the bone level. And usually if you have a really good healthy bone level, you're not any, in any danger right now for developing periodontal disease. You might have gingivitis. Um, but if they see, if they take these x-rays and you have some bone loss, then that's when, that's when they'll talk to you about what your options are, what you need to have done, what kind of cleaning you need to have. Um, and also, you know, it just gives you a peace of mind, you know, I mean, if you go in and you just make sure that you don't have any cavities, you don't have uh, bone, you know, gum disease, you don't have anything going on, if nothing else, it makes your, your journey with weight loss surgery even more, because you don't have to worry about that, that factor of it, because the thing is, is you can go and get weight loss surgery all day long, but if you are not taking care of your mouth, you're still susceptible to getting 
diabetes, heart disease, have a stroke, have all kinds of things wrong with you. Um, so you definitely, if you're going to try and go in and take care of yourself and try to get your weight under control, you might as well take care of everything, mouth included. Because don't leave that out. You're going to be putting food in it. You might as well be, you know, making sure that you don't have any germs or bacteria or anything going on in there. Um, and basically, after you go to the dentist, they can review your medical history. And then they have a better better picture than what I could give you of what, um, uh, what you're going to need at that time, basically. Um, so anyway, I wanna, don't want to make this video too long. So basically, if you are watching this video, most likely you want to have weight loss surgery, and you, um, or you've already had, excuse me, you've already had weight loss surgery. I think um, <clears throat> all of us in the community are uh, approaching weight loss surgery as a preventative measure, and in order to get healthy and maintain a healthier lifestyle, we want to get rid of or avoid diabetes, heart disease, and eventual death due to obesity-related diseases. So in my professional opinion, um, I am all about profession, all about prevention. I want to get just, you know, I want to, I want to head things off at the path. I don't want to have a problem creep up on me, such as diabetes, which I'm not diagnosed with diabetes yet. But, and then, um, then insurance is like, oh yeah, go ahead and take care of it. We'll go ahead and take care of it. No, I don't want that. My insurance ain't going to pay for it anyway, so it doesn't matter. I could be dying and I won't pay for it. But anyway, um... Um, so anyway, basically you can save yourself a whole lot of money in the long run if you go ahead and just go and get your cleaning, go and get your exam, get your x-rays, and get all of that taken care of. Um, like I said before, I really would love for you to subscribe to my channel. It is free after all. You're not going to hurt anybody. I promise you. I'll, I'll even subscribe back to you. And I figured out how to do it and see where, who my subscribers are. Um, please feel free to ask any questions, comments, concerns in the comments section below. And if you, like I said earlier, if you want me to make a video about anything else related to this subject matter, I'd be happy to. Just let me know. There's so much more I could talk about. And I know I was kind of all over the place, but I hope you kind of got the gist of what's going on. Um, there are, I'm going to put a few links in the bottom just so that you guys can go there and read for your own information. You know, the effects of periodontal disease or gum disease. Uh, and, and hopefully some of that will give you some good information. I want you uh, to all have a great week and to remember, I want you to trust the process. Whatever you're going through, just trust the process. God bless.